Hey guys, welcome back to another Hypixel related video. In this video, I want to show you something that we've made on stream. So I started this project back in, God, I think it was February or March. And then I got burnt out, took a long break, came back about two months ago, a month and a half ago, I forget. And I recoded it from scratch because all the old code is very messy. It's written in JavaScript, which I'm not used to. I'm used to coding in Python. So there's a bit of a learning curve there, but we tidied it up, coded the whole thing from scratch, far more efficient, and it actually works this time as intended. And we added a few cool features on stream. Uh, shout out to Chief Chippy. Uh, you may know him from the forums and such, or from my Discord, uh, or even my streams, if you've attended in my streams. He helped out. Uh, quite a lot with this bot when it comes to understanding JavaScript. Uh, anyways, I'm going to show you guys how it works, give a quick overview of the code, and then go and show you what it looks like when you actually run the script. So first off, uh, we've got a ton of things that we import. I'm going to go over the main ones here. So we import colors. This is so that in our console, uh, the visual aspect of it, so the bot joins and it displays what's in chat, right? But to display what's in chat, normally by default for a console, it's all white, right? So the text is white, the background's black, or you can change it to some other static color combination by editing your console properties. However, we wanted it so that each uh, chat is color coded. So if the code in game, sorry, if the chat in game would be blue, well then in your console it's blue. If it's purple in game, then it's purple in your console. So there's a one-to-one -one ratio between each color. And so we set up like that. And to do that, we need colors. Uh, we set up Mindflayer. Uh, this is our main base. It's just to have a Minecraft bot. And to do anything with a Minecraft bot, we use Mindflayer. Uh, for the Prismarine viewer, for Mindflayer viewer, we use this. This is very simple, uh, just so that you can check it out in the browser. So in the browser, you can visually see what's surrounding the bot, which I think is very interesting. We took quite a few screenshots using the bot. Uh, like that, so people uh, who are watching the stream live could go in game and talk to the bot and stuff, and it was uh, a world of fun. Next up, we import our account details. So this is just a JSON file where I have the Minecraft bot account details in there. So it's a real Minecraft account, a premium account uh, that I no longer use. It's an alt account, and that's the bot that we're using that just has the account details. So I don't leak them on stream or on video or anything. Next up, we've got some read line stuff. Don't know what this does. Uh, I just know Chief Chippy said we need it, so we need it. Same thing with this. So Chief Chippy set this up, and uh, it is what it is. Next up, we create the Mindflare bot instance. So we tell it use version 1.8.9. The username is the password, and this is what you're going to log into. It's the IP. We've got a function for converting colors. So whether that's text, so like the color dark red, or the color code ampersand four, which if you don't know is uh, Minecraft color code for dark red, into the text, and then we change it to red, and then for dark red we add a dim, and we do that for all 16 of the colors. So this is white all the way to black. So every color of wool that you can think of, we essentially have that. Um, except, well, not really color for the wool. If, if you've ever done Minecraft color code stuff for like signs or whatever, that's the colors we have. It's close to every color of wool, not really every color of wool. Uh, because we have like red and red dim. You don't have red dim for uh, wool colors. Anyways, enough about that. And then we've got some uh, stuff. And then if we don't know what color it is, then just say, give me white instead, right? Uh, if we don't know what color it is, it's white by default. Give me white. Next up, we got a JSON for parsing messages. I'll come back to that in a second here. That's our big boy. Uh, next up, some of the bot functions. So on the login event for the bot, so the bot has quite a few built-in events on Mindflare. There's a list of several dozen events. We use quite a few of them. Uh, we use on login. So when it logs in, it tells you in the console, hey, I logged in. And when it spawns in, so the difference there, logging in is connecting to the server, spawning in is spawning into the world. It says that it spawned in. Here I've got some uh, Mindflayer viewer for the Prismarine viewer setup. We, I'm not gonna go over that. Uh, if you want, you can attend one of the streams and you can check that out. But uh, you can also just do your own research if you watch this video and you're interested. Next up, we wanna know where we are. And to do that on Hypixel, we use the slash lockrock command. If you don't know what lockrock is, you, do, you type in lockrock in chat. And then it gives you back a raw JSON of your current location, your current account location. 
It's gonna give you the map, the game mode, the lobby. Uh, it can give you many things. Anyways, of those many things, we keep track of them, but to know them, we need to get them, and so we use lock raw, but we need to add a delay using set timeout because if we don't set the delay and do it as soon as we spawn in, uh, it's too fast. So we have to spawn in and then like, cause the on spawn is like on the first tick of being in the world, but that doesn't necessarily mean that things around you have loaded, including like the chat. So we wait a little bit and then we do it. And then we have another function that like gets the output and handles it. And then on top of that, we also then, if we're in a limbo, then go to our default lobby, which is a custom variable that we set at the bottom. So basically, uh, if we say our custom default lobby is going to be classic games lobby, uh, or like let's say arcade games, because there's probably more people who are aware of arcade games lobby. Uh, classic lobby is a little dead, even though I love those games. Uh, then uh, if it ever gets sent to Limbo for being AFK, which happens a lot to the spot because it's AFK all the time, it just detects chat really. We haven't gotten it to move around or anything yet. Then uh, it'll just say, hey, I'm in Limbo. I don't want to be in Limbo because there's no one to talk to in Limbo. So we're just going to go over to Arcade Games uh, or whatever the custom default lobby is set to. And then on message, this is when the bot receives a message. Uh, and this is what goes and refers to our big function at the top. So uh, this is some debugging stuff, but you send uh, your chat message. It's the raw JSON uh, object of the chat message, which is nothing like what the chat message looks like, into our function called a parse message. And then we take the output of that and toss it into these two things. So it'll give us back an array with two different subarrays. The first array is message click event, and the second one is message hover event. So message click event is if you click on a message, sometimes it has a custom attribute to that, where it'll open up a link, or it'll open up a GUI, or it'll send a command, stuff like this. Uh, and so we want to keep track of those, because we don't care just about what the message is itself, but also how it functions, and also on hover event. So if you hover over a message, it, sometimes it shows stuff. And then if the message click events a length, so if the length of the click events is at least one element, then we show it. Uh, so if there's at least one click event logged, then show them. And then we could also do the same thing for message hover events, but generally hover events aren't as important. But uh, it's in case we, we need it, and there's several other things we can add in the future if we plan on using them. Uh, anyways, so this goes to our parse message. That's this big thing. So parse message, essentially we want a few things out of the message. So this big message JSON, JSON, we need to extract the useful information. Now, what do we consider useful information? Well, we consider the text, so the raw text in the message, we consider that useful. We consider the color of the message useful, which by default we're going to set to white. We consider the um, click events and the hover events. So these are the four main things that we consider quote unquote useful or the things that we care about. Now, to get those, we start by checking if there's just text that is easy to grab, and same thing if there's color that's easy to grab. Now, if there's no text or color easy to grab, there's other places that there may be text or color hiding from us. So we'll just go ahead and make sure to grab that if it is hiding from us from where it might be hiding. Uh, but for if it's not hiding from us, then we just grab it from where it is, where it's supposed to be. But uh, then after that, I said, just in case, sometimes it's lock raw. We don't know if it's lock raw. Override for JSON feedback from lock raw. So if we can, it's if it's just a raw JSON input, then determine the JSON and send it. Now, if it's not a lock raw JSON and it's not well, just easy to find, uh, or sorry, if it's still easy to find, then we have to check for click events. So we go through all click events, then we go through all the hover events. And now, if the message is not empty, then go through and show the result and then print the thing. However, I believe this may or may not be recursive. Is it not recursive? I remember this being recursive. One, two, three. Ah, uh, yes, here. Yeah. Uh, 
So this is, sorry, this is, I, I, I skipped over this. I got to the bottom. So here, if the message is possible, so if there's a text thing to look at, not every message has this, then print it out in the given color using color text, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then at the very bottom, uh, sometimes there's stuff hidden and it's hidden recursively. So we recursively go through the thing and then pass down the click events and hover events. So it'll print each uh, text with its given color separately, but then for the message as a whole, it collects all the click events and combines them into one. Same thing for hover events. Uh, and so that's how that works. And then at the bottom here, there's a few last things to go over. And this terabyte is under 300 lines. So this is reasonable to do if you get to know the libraries and stuff. Specifically, Mindflare. I think there's a lot of stuff that we can play with in the future. I'm excited to do that, by the way. If you don't want to miss out, check out my streams or my Discord to not miss out on any streams. Or you can go ahead and turn on bell notifications if you prefer that instead of joining my Discord. This is some listen user input, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. This basically just makes it so I can type in my console and then it'll send the message in game to type back to people. I didn't write this code, okay? Chief Chippy wrote this code. It works and it's small, it's clean, it's tidy, no issues with it. So I'm just going to use it. That's as simple as it is. And here we're using the bot that chat function to send messages. And here I've got some DSL stuff. So this is our default lobby. Right now we've got to set the classic games lobby. And then we've got some info on the current bot's location. So the server, game mode, and map of where the bot currently is that we may use in the future. Anyways, that was a lot of explaining. That's about 12 minutes of explaining. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys it actually working because for the past 12 minutes, I've had it running. Um, so I'm going to transfer you guys over to this. Oh, it is uh, bugging out here. Let's restart the bot. Yeah. So we're going to run the script using node and then bestbot.js, bestbot is the name of my file. And when we run it, I go log in and then it'll spawn in. And then we immediately get uh, to see some messages that the server sends us. So the server tells us how many unclaimed leveling rewards we have. And that's about it. And we just wait for someone to talk in chat, hopefully. If I say hello, you'll see that it's the account name, uh, which you may recognize. And then I said hello, and then there's a click event. So if you click on this message, it'll view my profile. It'll open up the GUI. And that's the UID, I believe, for the GUI. And you'll see someone opened up a four-star mystery box. Beautiful. Uh, and everything's color coded where you can actually see the four stars. We didn't have this pre uh, previously. And here you can see we've color coded every single arrow for the MP plus I joined. And now you might be asking one little thing. What if someone has black plus plus or black plus? How do we show the color black? Well, very simple. For the color black specifically, we make the background white. So if you ever see that there's like a white background for a single character, that's because the character main color is black and we can't really show black on a black background so we show the background as white temporarily just for that one character and you can see there it's telling us to join some quake games some the walls someone uh, opened a mystery box i believe that's an M uh, mvp uh plus player or mvp player we've got some people joining the lobby some plus plus is joining the lobby see he's got a black plus so we show the background as white we've got a ton of stuff you got the joint advertised game command which a lot of people don't know about go check out that stuff got muhammad f in the chat opening up a five star uh, or finding a five star mystery box not opening my bad this whole time i thought they were opening but now they're just uh finding and so there's a ton of stuff like this. And if people type, then I'll see their messages and stuff. And it's all super cool. And if you ever want to see any of this bot development, go ahead and, like I said, turn on bell notifications so you don't miss a stream or join Discord uh, so you don't miss a stream because I tag everybody for every stream because I'm annoying like that. And if you have any questions on this bot or if you have any suggestions, if you, if you want to tell me what you want to see next with this bot in the future, go in the description of this video tell me what you want to see i want to know what you want to see you know uh because at the end of the day this bot is so that you guys can see what it does and this is a perfect example of our anti-limbo here so it, it got kicked sent to limbo it logged in spawned into limbo it sees the messages and it's like whoa i'm in limbo and then it says no and then it leaves it uses the slash lobby classic command to leave uh, so now we're back in the classic lobby. Boom, just like that, automatically anti-limbo. Um, we could have a better anti-limbo by having him move around, but we haven't gotten around to that part. I do know how to make him move, but uh, 
there's some finicky anti-bot rules going on in Hypixel where they're not very fond of having bots that do stuff. So for now, we just analyze this chat. Anyways, yeah, like I said, go ahead, check down the description. I want to see what you guys want. I want to know what you guys want to see uh, because I think that this is a very interesting project that no one has done before. And maybe hopefully in the future, we can potentially get Hypixel staff to give us a waiver in some way to let us do some AI development on the network. However, right now that seems like a hard no and no staff is willing to give me an answer on a yes or no for it, no matter the circumstances, because every staff is too scared that they'll say something and then I'll get punished and then I'll be like, oh, but this staff told me. And then Hypixel himself or Plank or whatever will be like, too bad, I'm overruling as well. So no staff is willing to talk to me and all the higher up staff uh, refuse to, to talk. It's very hard to get a conversation with them. Uh, so it's a little difficult right now, but hopefully in the future we'll get to see some cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I've been Zorak360, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.